My name is Emma Carter and I am a secondary school art teacher and visual artist from County Westmead in Ireland. My style is abstract expressionism. I explore a line as a mark on my canvas. And my aim is to manipulate this line and form new marks in my work. Different size brushes and angles at which I apply the paint help me to achieve an illusion in my work that would almost invite you to look closer and make sense of where each mark and line connects. I want to allow the, my line marks to make their own abstract space within the gestures of paint. I tried to find a conversation between the marks and lines and also the colours chosen, announcing their presence within each abstract space, resulting in a dialogue in the painting between all of the elements. Each colour chosen corresponds to its opposite colour, and I then mix various tones and shades of the colours to create depth. I entice the viewer to feel a certain way when viewing my work. Each canvas has a different impact on how the viewer sees the work, whether it's a mood, feeling or longing for answers. Process is a big part of my work. I've taken part in many exhibitions in Ireland. Recently, I held a solo exhibition named Geyer to raise funds for the paediatric unit in Mullingar Regional Hospital, County Westmead. My most recent exhibition, Future Landscapes, took place in Palazzo Albrizzi Capello in Venice, Italy. My paintings were on show with 40 other international artists. My next exhibition, Visions, will take place in the Line Contemporary Art Gallery, Shoreditch, London, on the 29th of September. Following on from this, I'll be showcasing work in Rome in January 2024. I studied fine arts specialising in paint in ATU School of Design and Creative Arts in County Galway. After completing my undergraduate degree, I completed my MA in Professional Masters of Art Education in Art and Design with Digital Media in Limerick School of Art and Design, County Limerick. Since graduating, I've been teaching art to students while also showcasing my paintings in various exhibitions in Ireland. I quickly found my niche when studying fine art in ATU. My experience of attending an art academy triggered my style of work and it has only slightly changed since then as a lot of my work is commissioned for clients who are designing a room for a house or building. My palette is normally based on interior factors such as wall colours, cushions, couches, etc. Artists seek to captivate a viewer's eye and allow them to understand what our work is about. I never fully understood my work until I had my eureka moment or my breakthrough moment when finding my niche. Majority of contemporary artists use past or present events to influence their work. Society is influenced by what is seen. It is my job as an artist to give viewers an opportunity to think about what they see and how they feel rather than give them the answers. Artists give society freedom of thought in a creative realm. My inspiration is the world around me. I count myself extremely lucky enough to be able to see colours and shapes and I appreciate them because they have been man-made or are natural. I take these shapes and colours and amalgamate them into an abstract expressionism piece of art using mark making gestures of paint. Process is a big part of my work. I work quickly and everything is captured in a spontaneous dance of paint, portraying an infin infinite end to the knots and lines seen in my work. My work makes the viewer question the relationship between a structured entity and the realisation of a new world. I was raised in the countryside in a small village called Collinstown and our family home was always welcoming for creativity and mischievous drawings. My sisters and I always had notebook or markers. I remember receiving an art set when I was very young and my friends all received techie gadgets but I was quite happy with the art set. My mother sadly passed away after a short battle with cancer in 2011 when I was 14 years old. My little sisters were 11 at the time, so as a big sister, they were my priority. My world changed and very quickly I turned to drawing and painting as a way to cope with such a big loss. Art seemed to fill the painful gap in my heart when I lo no longer had my mum. She always hyped me up when drawing or painting. She was the one to push me to keep at it and I did. I really owe it to her for letting my imagination and creativity flow during my childhood. My biggest influences, I would say, are Vicky Barangay and the world around me. At the present time, I'm focusing on creating work for upcoming shows in London and Rome, and I'm finding new ways to improve my work. My most recent trip to London has thoroughly influenced my paintings for the exhibition in London. The biggest challenge of being an artist is overcoming the thought of people not liking my work and not understanding it. I recall meeting a critic visiting one of my exhibitions and they made a remark saying that maybe a five-year-old could paint my canvases. I laughed and agreed, but I remember going back to the studio the following day, full of paranoia that others would also think this. What helped me overcome this was the positive attributes to the exhibition by other viewers. 
They were intrigued to know and understand my work. Positives always overcome the negatives, as long as you just put them first. The advice I would give my younger self is that you need to be yourself when it comes to expressing yourself through art. You make art for yourself, not to please others. And be yourself, it's as simple, simple as that. Um, in some of my canvases, I use ink and spray paint. They are fun to use, especially when I feel painting is missing something. They also tend to lead to happy accidents. I listen to music all of the time when I'm working. I don't work well in silence. I recall a viewer asking where my signature was um, while we're looking at my artwork at an exhibition. And I proceeded to tell them that I always signed the back canvases. I do this because I actually rotate the canvas while painting it. It allows me to see a range of viewpoints and this also applies to clients when commission pieces for their homes or spaces. They might want to hang the works in a different way to suit their own eye and they were astonished as they had never heard that before but respected my decision as they realised about the client's views before my own. Um, I hope people take away some form of relief when viewing my artwork. As I said, it entices the viewer to make sense of what they see in the world or how they feel. If they walk away with my work having made an impact on them, then I've achieved my goal.